hooks him a little bit. Lost his stick. Gives him a poke. Harris was checked. The puck rolls in front. Heron just able to get it as Schmutz got his stick, came back. Starts to jam with Talon now. On Talon. Schmutz and Talon. Dale Talon and Bobby Schmutz in a wing ding. Hard drives by Schmutz. And now they hang on. Schmutz firing away his best effort in a man-to-man -man battle with uh, Talon, taller, heavier. Wing kept in by Redmond. Redmond shifting, moving, shooting. And it goes high. Anderson clears it out. Here's Secord squaring off against Johansson. Al Secord and Trevor Johansson. And kind of a wrestling match now. No one uh, got a clear-cut punch away. And Secord, the Bruins rookie, against Trevor Johansson. And they'll both be going out for roughing. And we'll see how steep Harris calls it. Bombing. Moving it right back in. McKechnie after Miller. And here's a fight. Williams has grabbed somebody. At... Williams is on the bench. And the Bruins coming off the bench. It was Jonathan. Williams started a fight with... Williams was not on the ice. He was on the Toronto bench. And he started a fight with Jonathan. I, I don't mean to say he started the fight. Some kind of an altercation started. I've never seen that before. Somebody on the bench. A, a battle with somebody on the ice. To Redmond. Shot. Oh, blocked by Burrows. And battling Middleton and Settler. Rick Middleton and Daryl Sittler. Rick Middleton and Daryl Sittler, we have not seen Middleton fight, doing a good job against the big Toronto man. Rick Middleton and Daryl Sittler. Since he's been with the Bruins, we have not seen uh, Middleton, but he's done everything else. He Face-off with Federico, and Wensink had it, couldn't move it out. Good play by Foster, and now a jam. And here, going, number 10, Wayne Babbage and John Wensink. Look out, look out, Babbage, look out. Well, Wayne Babbage, right out of junior hockey. I don't know, he took a couple of Wensink rights, and they'll both be uh, going out. O'Reilly against Williams. Now Secord into the corner against Hutchison. And Hutchison wrapped him up, is going out for holding. Hutchison for holding Secord. And now a battle, Secord and Hutchison. Bailing away, the extra penalty will go against Hutchison, a holding call. And then they started battling. Secord and Dave Hutchison. Still at it. A good right by the rookie. Hutchison trying to pin him. And they're still going. And down goes Hutchison. And uh, Secord did a nice job against a tough customer from Los Angeles. going to have a penalty against the Bruin goaltender. And now Holmgren in there against the Bruins, and they pound away. Well, Terry O'Reilly, Terry O'Reilly was coming after Holmgren as he took out both players in the corner. Jill Gilbert and O'Reilly. They both got up, and, and Holmgren threw the first three punches. 
Then Brent, or pardon me, O'Reilly got up, started throwing punches. Now Tomiko and Claude Bechard have separated the both of them. And Gilbert took a swing at Paul Holmgren with his stick, and I believe he might get a minor penalty as well. But Holmgren just took two men out, and Terry O'Reilly came to the aid of his goaltender to make sure that the Flyers know that they're not supposed to touch him. Well, Gilbert has not been an innocent bystander. He already has 10 penalty minutes for a goaltender in 10 games as they try now to break apart two of hockey's strongest wingers, Paul Holmgren and Terry O'Reilly. And Wensick, Ben Wilson and Wensick. There they go. There, Joe, Ben Wilson is really landing some right hands on John Wensick, and then Wensick is as well, but Ben Wilson was really checked by Wensick. Into the boards, and Wilson didn't waste any time at coming oh, back ben after Wilson's him. coming back. They are really throwing the punches. Both of them are really landing some good blows. Wensick just landed an overhead left and knocked Wilson to the ground, but Wensick really checked Wilson into the boards. And Wilson just took off the board, didn't even worry about the puck or the play, went right after John Wensick and engaged him in a, in a fight. Let me tell you, this young Ben Wilson for the Flyers is will not back down from anybody. He just didn't hesitate. He just went straight to Wensick and said, let's go. It was an excellent fight. Both players landed some good right hands. Wensick's last left. Knocked Wilson down to the ice. That's when the referee, or the linesman, D'Amico and Bechard jumped in and separated the two. The Flyers offensive right wing corner by Sims. Oh, up comes Miller. As Bridgman right in front to McLeish, a shot. Blocked the Gilbert out of the net. We're going to have another penalty. Terry O'Reilly really took after Paul Holmgren when he was fighting for the puck. He just came right in and... Started punching at him. They're, they're wrestling now. No punches at all were thrown, but O'Reilly and Milbury took Paul Holmgren into the corner as Holmgren's looking down, trying to keep the puck playing in his skates. I That's thought when on they that, started. I thought on that check after Milbury went in, uh, O'Reilly really came in with a high elbow, and I was surprised there wasn't a call on that. It was actually a punch, Gene. He came in and punched at Paul Holmgren. And when the puck came out, he, both, he grabbed onto Holmgren and they started wrestling. No punches were thrown. And they're still trying to separate the two players. Holmgren now up on his feet. But O'Reilly really had no, no intention of getting the puck. He just went right to the corner. He wanted a piece of Paul Holmgren for nailing his goaltender in for the fight they've had earlier in the period at 5.03. Well, if they each get five for fighting, we'll have had 13 penalties in the first period, half of them for the fighting. Now they've got a scramble in there, and here we go again. Bob Daly and Peter McNabb are holding on to each other. Bridgman is in there. And oh. somebody has grabbed a hold of Paul Holmgren to pull him off, Terry O'Reilly. O'Reilly's viciously trying to push off John D'Amico, who's as strong as any linesman in the league, to get into that scramble in the corner. That sees everybody but O'Reilly and the two goaltenders jammed up. I think what it started was Milbury was grabbing at Holmgren, and Mel Bridgman got in there to grab Milbury. Now Secord, now Bridgman and O'Reilly have got it. Looks like Paul's been cut. Looks on the left side of his face he's got some blood. That could have happened right at the very start when, when uh, Paul, uh, T Terry O'Reilly just punched at him. Mike Milbury on the ground with Paul, with Mel Bridgman on top of him. As he's giving him a little extra uh, all-star wrestling hold with his legs. Now, Bridgman shoving Milbury. Milbury doesn't want a any part of Mel Bridgman. Now they're trying to think around now. Bill Br Bridgman is well remembered by the Bruins for his excellent fights with Terry O'Reilly. Now they're going to go out of Bridgman right on top of Milbury and is landing a lot of right hands to him. Milbury's mainly trying to throw him. He's just kind of pawing at the open air and he hasn't been able to do anything. Now Bridgman has landed about four or five really good punches. I wouldn't be surprised John, Keith, or John McCauley, uh, Gene, plays the top end of this period at the start of the second period as the order is really being hard to be restored. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bridgman now and uh, Milbury will have continued this long after a stoppage of play, perhaps to receive game misconducts. 
I think it started with Milbury grabbing at Holmgren when uh, Holmgren and O'Reilly were on the ground. Milbury doesn't want anything part, part of Mel Bridgman, not one bit. You can just see it in the look at him. I think McCauley has thrown O'Reilly out and Holmgren out as well. He is really upset as he's having trouble trying to get order restored here. A good uh, stand-up battle between the two young scrappers. Jonathan trying to get it loose. Gare can fight too. Jonathan gets some heavy rights in. And uh, you got to give the edge to Jonathan there against a Gare, very good fighter, Gare. As Jonathan finally got loose and got some right hands in. Gets it over the line. Pass up, stopped by Doak in front. And a penalty coming up on Boston. And here goes Schmatz and Sargent. Schmatz and Sargent pounding away, and Schmatz had that broken nose, and he's pounding away on Gary Sargent. Schmatz wrestles him down. Bobby Schmatz, who picked up a broken nose, a bad eye when hit by a puck, battling toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sargent, and they were throwing them, and that verdict goes to Schmatz. Infraction going to be called by the referee as to Bobby Schmatz, so the Bruins will be most likely shorthanded coming up. We'll have to wait for the official announcement. We're into a scrap back out at center ice. Flat and O'Reilly. And O'Reilly lands a left hand. Oh, they both throw punches. Customers there, O'Reilly and Plett. And it was just a matter of time, and you knew something was going to happen with these two guys. By Marsh and goes down as the period ends. Score is Secord running into uh, Marsh. A little uh, past the lair as Secord came off the bench. And Secord throwing a punch in a while, mainly now. And it is O'Brien and Marsh battling. The Bruins did not like the way Marsh checked Miller and knocked him down, and Jim Petty is out in the action. And Marsh wrestles down O'Brien. And O'Reilly and Filipoff, they had an earlier battle. They are squared off, now wrestling. Terry O'Reilly slams him down with a body press, gets on top, and that ends that as the linesmen concentrate on that one. O'Reilly and Filipoff. O'Reilly threw a wicked check on Filipoff. We see John Wensink and Eric Vale. They're each uh, holding on. And uh, it all started with a Brad Marsh check and Bob Miller with five seconds left. Fairly harmless. Uh, I think Secord then came off the bench. And we'll see what uh, Wally Harris is going to call here as they're finally getting around to separating Filipoff and O'Reilly, and O'Reilly has handled uh, Filipoff, the big 6'3", 220-pounder, pretty well. Fred, I think what made it even worse on the Marsh check on Miller, he hit the, the jutting part of the glass where the glass ends over by the Boston bench, which made the impact even more than it might normally have been. It was not that hard a check, but he did hit that open area with, I think, his shoulder, which knocked him back and jarred him more than it might have. Well, it's not settled yet. Lysiak and O'Brien now. And Wally Harris is trying to step in between the two. And Wensick and Bale could break out. They are still locked. Apart from the rest of the players. Each hanging on and neither has thrown a punch. So it has not settled down yet. Uh, Don Cherry is on the ice. Some bruised feelings here. The heaviest action, Filipoff and O'Reilly, they're still on the ice. But uh, the problem for Harris is to uh, get things broken up and cleared away. 
of Fred uh, Bale and Winsick. Neither one of them is going to let go until somebody separates them because then each one is afraid that the guy who lets go first is going to get the first punch in. So that'll have to be broken up by the linesman. Well, uh, Harris has moved in on that situation. He'll Secord and Marsh, they may go. They do. Secord, two beautiful lefts, a third left. Secord, a tiger. We have not seen him fight. He threw a couple of hard lefts. It is wrestling now. Secord and Marsh. Secord has the jersey over Marsh, which handicaps him. And Secord, another left-hander, and O'Reilly and Filipov may go. We have to keep an eye on that. They are squared away. O'Reilly and Filipov. There they are. As Secord, here's O'Reilly throwing that left as they move in again. Filipov and O'Reilly. Still battling. O'Hara now the tugging. Neither able to get anything going, but O'Reilly has that jersey over his head, and that locks him up as far as trying to do anything. Oh, 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 O'Reilly uh, tried to trip him. And they call uh, a penalty on that, uh, John. Well, this is a very tired group of players right at this moment. Uh, can't stand that constant wrestling and holding on. We still have Vale and Winsink holding on to each other. That was, uh, had uh, made an effort to uh, break them apart, but they went from there to the Philippoff and O'Reilly affair with Secord and Marsh going at it. And uh, things have subsided a little bit at this moment, but to say that this has gotten out of hand It's very obvious. Okay, a very tired uh, Terry O'Reilly. And now they're trying to separate Wensink and Vale. And uh, finally do. Well, fighting's part of it. This kind of got out of hand. But I tell you, Secord on Marsh threw some lefts. There is Terry O'Reilly. He's exhausted with his battles with uh, Filipov. Secord threw some lefts. Kind of reminiscent of Jonathan and Bouchard. He whipped them out there. He is a very strong young man, Al Secord. Works uh, very uh, diligently at the conditioning. He's standing near O'Reilly. They have been uh, the battlers. The O'Brien uh, battle with uh, Marsh was uh, kind of wrestling. And of course, you take on the Atlanta team. Bruins uh, like that battling, but this is a big, big team. If, if Filipov at 220 isn't there, uh, Pat Ribble or uh, somebody else is. And uh, now uh, he's finally restored. And uh, from a Boston viewpoint, that's the most excitement of the night. Well, they're down six to two, but you know, occasional fisticuffs breaking out to let off steam is one thing, but a complete bench clearing affair like we had here, although it was at the end of the period, but this has gotten out of hand and is not what you consider to be uh, National Hockey League hockey. Well, now they're uh, picking up the sticks and uh, Wally Harris will have time to make some uh, assessments. And Don Cherry has been on the ice, striding uh, back and forth. He's near the bench, but on the ice. Fred Creighton did not leave the uh, Atlanta bench. His team has the lead, and he would not like to see any uh, excessive uh, penalties. But now, they are uh, filing out, and we'll have the assessment. Boston had eight shots, Atlanta had 15, and Atlanta 26, and uh, Boston 19. Here's a case where John Winston 
Kovacic is completely out of the game, and he knows it. He's going to do everything in his power here to really pulverize Howard, unless somebody can get in there, because the both officials are trying to tie it up, but Winsick is getting the better of it, and because he knows he's out of the game. He's just going to do everything in his power to try and hit as many players as they can, but right now he's got Gary Howard. Dennis O'Brien, Dennis Pipan came within just inches. Well, you can see that uh, Winsick is still going at it. Cashman and Marshall are tugging at each other. Now the guy who started it all is number 31, Jim Petty, and uh, it looks like he's learned a little bit from Jerry Chambers, but Jerry Chambers certainly does not go that far. Now Eddie, uh, the stick plane got a little bit heavy. With a break in the action, 17.45 to go and no score. Let's pick the action up and watch watch the swinging stick. Well, this is because of the incident earlier. Look, it, there's no need for that. Now, Gary Howard has to retaliate a little bit, and he does. But now look what happens. Now he goes after him. Here, the goalie's going after him. He's going to try and take control of the game. And, and he thinks, now, even though he's got the mask on, he is actually getting some pretty good shots at him because what is happening... Oh, he got his shots in. There's no question. The mask is form-fitting to your nose, and all you got to do is keep banging the side of it, and you can break the goaltender's nose. That has to hurt. You feel that through that mask. You've got to feel it. There's a little man who just did a, a, a super job there because not only had to take on a goaltender, but then John Winsick. And when you look at it, here's John Winsick with 28 goals out for the game. And Gary Howard, uh, you've got to give him his credit. He took a, a few bumps there, but I'll tell you, he'll be back. And I, I feel sorry for uh, Jim Petty. Here comes Schmott with Middleton. And the play outside, and Bobby Schmott ready for Logan. And... Uh, they get tied up. Logan went right after him. Schmatz was ready, and now Schmatz down, and the linesmen separate him. I tell you, if anybody was ever ready for the attack, it was Schmatz. As he carried over the line, he knew Logan would be coming after him, and they tangled, and they are both going out. Schmatz and Dave Logan. match right now. Two big men. And they're separated by the linesman. Still trying to throw punches. Decord flashes away from the linesman and he struck Matty Pavlich. And this will be further trouble for Boston. Pavlich hurt. He took a punch from Secord, I believe, as Secord broke away from him, flung him down, and Newell now, as Jim Kosak is out to look at Matt Pavlich, the veteran linesman. 